this is Rod Gary with Wrestling Inc. Is this yeah. call still <laughs> happening? No, it's like <laughs> we're having like an in- we're having like an informal group chat right now. It's become its own thing. Yeah. Are uh, are Sammy or Conan on yet? Yeah, I'm no. on. I've been on. I've been on since before too. I was on time. I'm not using any swear words. I mean, I think I'm doing a pretty good job right now. I'm trying to be a model citizen. Sam, I think you're, I think you're doing, crushing it right now, Sam. If anything, I'd say that this is probably the highlight of the Impact Media calls as a, as a place. I'm killing it right now. I'm killing it. Yeah, man. Hello? Well, man, maybe I'll just ask you anyway, Sammy. What, what were your thoughts on uh, Pop not airing this match? On what? Uh, Pop so TV it, not airing the match? It kind of sucks that it's not going to be on national television, but at the same time, Twitch is becoming such a big avenue right now. I think more people might actually be able to watch it. So now, yeah. like, more people will be able to see this match. And it'll help launch that Twitch channel, which I've been saying it for years in interviews. I think TV in the next five, five ten years is going to be a, it's going to be dead. Like everything's going to be different streaming sites. I don't even have cable anymore. I watch everything online. Yeah, I, I dropped my satellite too. <clears throat> uh, I'll kind of follow up on that, Sammy. I want to know: Is this something you've thought about in the past? I know you do a lot of different styles of wrestling. Have you wanted to have something like a? a more traditional American product on what they're doing on pop, on pop versus, you know, a more extreme hardcore product that you could put online and kind of split them up, but get the best of both worlds? I think absolutely it's the best of both worlds. Because you can't get away with everything that you get away with uh, not being a televised product when you're on national television. you got to watch your words. you got to watch the violence that you bring and being able to be on the new platform like Twitch, this might open up a whole other avenue. It's like, yo, we're going to have the regular TV product that's going to be killer in 2008 on pop TV, but sometimes mm-hmm. things are going to get a little too violent that's going to air uh, exclusively on Twitch. That's like kind of a cool avenue to go into that now people around the world, it doesn't really matter. They can be anywhere in the world that has Twitch and watch this match now. Hey, Sammy, what happened at the tapings with Sammy Callahan? I mean, not Sammy Callahan, uh, Eddie Edwards. Because um, that was in your guys' match where that baseball bat hit hit him in the head, right? Yeah, it was a freak accident that sucks, but um, we both had to talk afterwards, and it was one of those things that we think uh, it's going to make this entire angle and this entire platform better at the end of the day. Yeah. So let me get this straight. We're just going to just just go on and do this, uh, I guess, without Ross, right? Yeah, Ray, it's kind of like when the teacher used to leave the classroom and everybody talked anyway. Jeez, <laughs> can you guys hear me? Yeah, hey, Conan. Yeah. We're going to start oh, the yeah. conference call now. Uh, Conan, I can hear you. Can, you. can you hear me? Yes, I was on a couple minutes ago, but nobody could hear me. All right. Yeah. We, um, Sammy Callahan, I can hear Sammy Callahan, are you there? I am here alongside my best friend, my big miss, Jake Christ, because, uh, you know, we do everything together. Everything. It's it's kind of our thing. Perfect. I apologize on the slight little uh, delay. We had a little technical difficulties. We, we are ready to go. We got the the two main people involved in the uh, big Barb Dream Massacre number three tonight on Twitch, as everybody knows. You can watch it in an entirety tonight for free. For For free, free, I must reiterate. For free. You don't have to sign up. You don't got to do anything. You just go to the the link and you can watch it. 10 p.m. tonight. Not that hard. Perfect. Uh, We're going to open up. uh, First of all, get get an opening comment from each of you two guys, uh, being Conan and Sammy Callahan. Conan. Yeah, what's What's up? What's going on with you? Nothing. I'm on this press conference just waiting to chop it up. Whatever oh. questions there are, you know, throw my way. Boom. All righty. Sammy, what's, uh, what's the latest in your world? You know, just like I said, sitting here with Jake Chris, ready to do this media the conference. The recording has start- started. Oh, now the recording started. We just now started <laughs> the recording. Now, we can, so now you can on. talk, Sammy. Jake, how are okay, you doing? So- Oh, 
All right, well, we can open it up for questions at this point. Q&A session has started. To ask your question, please press star six. Star six, please identify. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. Question is geared for Sammy Callahan. I believe Jake is on the phone. And then uh, Conan as well. You may now ask your question. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com. I would say good morning, gentlemen, but uh, I think we could use that term a little, a little loosely here. Um, here's the deal. All right, let's get to brass tacks. You have Conan. I'm going to speak. This is directly at Conan. Conan, you guys are going to be at, you know, you're going to have a, a barbed wire match today. What pushed you to this barbed wire match? You've been around the block a thousand times and over again. What I want to know is what makes this team in OVE so different than any other teams you guys have faced in Impact Wrestling to push you this far? Because uh, a lot of people talk uh, about it, but they are about it. You know, they were willing to go out there, rip up their flesh. They were willing to take insane bumps. They were willing to, to risk injury, um, to make a name for themselves, and they entertain the crowd. So, you know, uh, it wasn't just anybody that we were going up against. And I think the cool thing is, uh, I don't know if you guys know about this, but the biggest accolade that a wrestler can get is when you go backstage and the wrestlers give you a standing ovation. And as you all know, there are monitors um, during the show. So all the wrestlers are looking at the at the matches. And we came back, and this is the first time that I've ever seen it. Uh, and maybe it has happened because I haven't been there, you know, for every show. But um, I was there for a couple of years, um, around 2006. And then, of course, I've been here for uh, uh, about another year now, now that I came back and it was the first time I saw anybody get, you know, a uh, standing ovation for the match. So that in itself lets you know that it was a great match. Muted. Hello? Hi, Conan. Hi, Conan. This is Raj Gary with Um You've been there through a lot of management changes. I just wanted to see uh, how the latest uh, creative team uh, was to work with. Well, you know, uh, it's easy to criticize people. I mean, uh, wrestling fans are hypercritical, hypersensitive, so much so that I remember when I was in Lucha Underground, I was talking to the executive producer, his name's Eric Van Wagenen, and he had done uh, Celebrity and Survivor. And obviously these are shows that garner millions and millions more viewers than Impact does. And he says that he got more letters from Lucha Underground fans than he ever did from those two shows combined. So the fans are very hypercritical um, and they have every reason to be because they haven't been given the product that they want. I think companies sometimes think they know what's best for their audience instead of listening to them. Uh, TNA has a big stain that they have to eradicate. Uh, I've talked to S Scott Diamore at length. I've talked to the whole creative team and to Ed Nordholm, and they know it's going to be an uphill climb. But from what they've told me, and I don't need to put anybody over because uh, that's not my style, you know, I think they're going in the right direction. So, um, you know, uh, you've got to get, you know, obviously there's budget cuts, so there's some higher paid wrestlers that will no longer be with us. So now they have to be resourceful enough to find the talent that's out there, cultivate it, and um, make them stars. There's, uh, I've never seen so much talent as there is right now in the indies. So the talent is out there. They just have to identify it and cultivate it. Okay, thanks. Thank you. Hey, this is uh, Jack with cultaholic.com. Um, this question's for Sammy. I was just wondering, um, you're an experienced wrestler in both like singles action and tag team action as well. Do you prefer one style over the other or do you see them both equally? Uh, I see them both equally and I love to do both because I get a chance to show different kinds of art forms and different kinds of storytelling. I can tell one story going one-on-one -on -one with Bobby Lashley trying to beat this monster of a man as I can tell a different story with my teammates of this gang mentality that we're coming at you from all sides at all times. It's a completely different story arc, and I love to be able to do both. All right. Thank you very much, man. 
We had an internet question, uh, emailed question, I should say. For Sammy, your thoughts about Conan, and then Conan, your thoughts personally about Sammy Callahan. Sammy, why don't well, you go ahead on that one first? At the end of the day, it's it's not hard to see. I've had a relationship with Conan for years now. He's a guy that's helped me out in Mexico. He's a guy that's given me some advice. But he's also a guy, I think, in the, today's day and age, and this is why we have this issue that made us want to agree to do a no-rope barbar match, that he still thinks he's right about everything. And we're trying to say, no, this is for our generation, by our generation. Our generation's right. We're changing it. And it's to the point where we don't need to listen to guys like him anymore. We can take their advice, but it's not gospel as it used to be. And I think that's why this is elevated to the place it's at. Yeah, you know, um, you know, Sammy's out there trying to make a name for himself, uh, going to New Japan, going to Lucha Underground. Um, I'm really not sure what he's talking about, not listening to my advice, because there is no substitute for experience. So don't listen to me and you'll see what happens. But at the end of the day, um, you know, this is a guy that's out there with the Chris brothers trying to make a name for themselves in a very uh, talented market and, um, you know, doing whatever it takes uh, to become a star. I can appreciate that because I did the same thing um, back in the day. I was willing to do anything, wrestle anybody, go anywhere um, to, to make a name for myself. And, you know, that's what they're doing. Um, we whooped their ass in this barbed wire thing. We took our titles back. Uh, they're off and running with somebody else right now, and I'm sure we're going to meet again, and uh, they're going to be hungry um, to prove that uh, what we did to them before, um, I don't know, uh, I, I, they're, they're going to be hungry to show and prove and to show out, and I like that. I like people that come, and they want to confront us, and they want to be on our, on, our, on our level, and so, you know, we're all about violence, mind games. And um, so, you know, we're waiting in the wings. We know we're going we're gonna to hook up again. But it's like at tapings just this past week. We started that set of tapings in the ring with LAX. Me and Conan were two live mics, unbeing scripted. And exactly what we said there, we meant. Like, this is far from over. Like, right now we can take a step back, but this isn't over in a long shot because we're always going to think we're the better group in Impact, the better business will do us, and they're going to think the same thing. So yeah. and, 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 I, and Sammy, I respect your right to be wrong, but at the end of the day, you know, here's the thing. These are guys, I, I love guys, you know, it, I love guys that are out there. They're not just collecting a paycheck. They're just not going through the motion. I like guys that are always trying to think of different things. And uh, them and, uh, you know, OVE and Sammy are, are, are like that. They're always trying to think of something new. They're always trying to think of something different for the fans. And, and that, you know, is what we're all about. You know, we try to be different. There's no group like LAX. There's never been a group like LAX. And so um, I think in the future, you're really going to see some great matches, some great promos, and some great angles. Hey, this is a Dick Fear from Sport One in Israel, and I have a question for Conan. First of all, how are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm good. Thank you very much. Hmm. So, uh, you talked about uh, the talent on the indie scenes, and uh, which team do you would you like to see uh, on the tag team division in Impact, and what are your general thoughts about the tag team division in, on Impact Wrestling? Well, there is really no tag team division in Impact Wrestling. It's just us and OVE. I don't think, I think maybe Conley and Trevor Lee would be the, the other team. Um, you know, we were going to do something with Eli Drake and Adonis, but he dipped and uh, St Steiner's in his place. I cannot see Steiner being a long-term replacement. So there's no, there's no real tag teams. That's something they're going to have to start doing, you know, bringing in some tag teams. Um, uh, um, uh, you know, out there, I don't know. I, you know, I like the Briscoes. Um, you know, uh, there, there's Sammy probably knows, but uh, you know more about tag teams than I do. Who's out there, Sammy, that catches your eye? Uh, I think there's a lot of good teams in the Midwest right now that are kind of underutilized and just need that chance to break out. There's a group from uh, the Chicago region, the, the AAW. 
tag team champions, the, the pro wrestling revolver tag team champions, and that's uh, the best season in the world, Davey Vega and Matt Fitchett. There are some guys that's been doing it for years, and over the past year, they really came together, got their looks together, got in better shape, and uh, I think they'd be an awesome add to any tag division right now. What do you think about the Young Bucks? Oh, the Young Bucks are uh, questionably the, the best tag team on the planet. They've revolutionized our business of how to promote ourselves and they're really trendsetters. Like, any company they go to anywhere in the world will benefit. No one company is bigger than the Young Bucks at this point. It's crazy to think in professional wrestling that they've been able to reach that stature and now, like, any company in the world will benefit from having them on their roster. Yeah, and let me add to that. When I was when I was in Lucha Underground, um, basically recommending talent, I had actually recommended the Young Bucks, and they gave them such a low figure because they didn't even know who they were. Imagine that, and they gave them such a low figure that they were well. They offered them two hundred dollars a match. Imagine that, and they were super hot. And so um, I wanted to put them with John Morrison because they're all from L.A. And I thought they would have done a real cool, you know, L.A., you know. Um, but I'm hoping that one day all this politics between companies, you know, because they're in Ring of Honor right now. And Ring of Honor doesn't work with us. And I just think at the end of the day, it's WWE and everybody else. Everybody else should work together. And if they're not going to work together, they shouldn't get in each other's way and try to help each other for, for, for and strengthen up the industry because what I feel that I see is I see there's this big fan base that doesn't like what the major companies are giving them and they like what the indies are giving them and there's this niche audience that's just following them and um, I just think that everybody should be working together because the boys would have more places to work, the fans would see matches that they normally don't see, and the promoters would make more money, so it's a win right across the board. And because one or two guys have an ego that they don't want to work with another company, a lot of people get caught up in the middle. And I think it's a big statement to where the business is right now. Uh, WrestleMania weekend has kind of been the, kind of became the San Diego Comic Con of the pro wrestling industry. Where it's all these different conventions, there's all these different shows, and there's WrestleMania there. But it was projected that last year in Orlando alone during WrestleMania weekend, there was like 195,000 people. Mania, I don't know the exact numbers, I think drew 90,000 people. So there was just as many people there not to see the WWE product that were there to see the WWE product. Like they're there for all the other shows, all the conventions, and everything else the wrestling world has to offer. And that's a really cool place for the wrestling world to be in right now. Yeah. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Good morning, gentlemen. David Dunn with the New Zealand Pro Wrestling Informer. Uh, my question is for Sammy Callahan. Sammy, Barbed Wire Massacre is pretty rare. This is the third one in Impact Wrestling, so they have happened before. Um, is this a sort of a matchup where you go back and you watch the previous two before you go into it, or you've just got to get in there in the ring and just take things as they come at you? Um, I absolutely went back and watched the ones previous. Uh, I saw them live when they happened. Being a uh, avid wrestling fan growing up, I remember watching those matches in high school with all my buddies. Just like, oh, we want to do this one day. But uh, and then it's come to the point where I am in my career, where Dave and Jake are in their career right now. We've been in matches like this, just not on a televised scale or uh, this big of a promotion. We've done this type of stuff all over the world, and now we get a chance to do it in front of, in front of the masses. Finally, we're going to go all out and do whatever we can because we've been in this situation before and we want to show people what we can do in that aspect. Hi, this is BQ from the Impact Lounge. My question is for Conan. Are you able to give us an update on Diamante? I know she wasn't in Canada, and from what I understand, she did not accompany LAX to Orlando. Is there anything you can uh, speak on regarding Diamante? Yeah, she had a knee surgery, and um, so she's been recuperating. She hasn't been medically cleared, so they don't want to take a chance that she comes back and she gets hurt, um, even if she isn't wrestling. But I'm almost positive. Uh, no, she will be at the next tapings, so she'll be back, and that'll be good because um, we need somebody like her in the women's division. Thank you. Hey guys, this is Harry Kettle from Sports Keyed, and my question's for Sammy. Sammy, barbed wire massacre is obviously a brutal concept, and there's often expected to be a lot of blood. 
So when you shed blood in the ring, does it give you an extra sense of adrenaline? And how much would you say it adds to the intensity of the match? Oh, it's absolutely a shot of adrenaline. Uh, pro wrestling is the, the best drug in the world. And uh, being able to be in a match like that, you have to really get your mind in a certain setting where all bets are off and you kind of do become the other person. You kind of become your guy, like whatever guy you're portraying at that moment. And you feed off stuff like that. It, it makes something special. I, I don't want to do it all the time. I don't think it should be done all the time. But when it's done, it's done right. It adds that extra element of just what the fuck, what a WTF, like what's going to happen next. Thanks, man. An email question for Conan. Conan, are your active days as a wrestler over? No. Uh, March 8th, I'm going to get a hip implant surgery. I actually have a hip implant right now that um, I didn't rehab it correctly, and I went into the ring earlier than I should have, and I messed it up. And so they're going to operate on March 8th. You know, then I'm going to go with my boy Ray Mysterio, who is in incredible shape. And uh, I'm going to do all, all the training that he's doing, you know, the modern training. And, um, and I'm going to do a retirement tour. So there's a good chance, Sammy, we will see each other in the ring. All right, uh, accept that. Maybe we can get a little bit of fire back into this like we did uh, in Ottawa. Yeah, we, maybe. Hey, guys. Brian Goldman from thegrillphysician.com. First of all, Conan, congratulations on this month uh, marking 30 years in professional wrestling. Uh, you've accomplished a lot. And having said that, um, as you look back, it's, it's almost astonishing to me how many people don't realize in America what a pop culture icon you were in Mexico. As you look back over your career, um, do you feel like you have two legacies, one in America and one in Mexico? Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, back then there was no Internet, so nobody really knew what was happening. And back then there was also the prevalent thought of who cares about Mexican wrestling, you know, where now everybody knows about Mexican wrestling. So it's incredible just the shift in attitude uh, and perception uh, when we first came to ECW, because that's really the first place that people really saw it besides when worlds collide. Um, you know, just <clears throat> before there was nobody that knew Lucha, before only Mexicans did Lucha, um, <clears throat> just it's a whole different, it's really shifted. But yeah, definitely um, two legacies, one in, one, in the, one in Mexico, one in the United States. Unfortunately, in the United States, um, we had a lot of politics that held us back in the mid-90s in WCW, which everybody's well aware of. But now I'm, you know, now there is nothing holding me back so I can really show, um, you know, what I can do. You know what I'm saying? So, yes. If you'd like to ask a question, your request has been received. For both of you, what was the highlight for each of you of Barbed Wire Massacre? <laughs> I'll let you go first on this one, Phil, man. Yeah, to me it was just the fact that, you know, everybody was really pumped. Everybody was motivated. We had a little little powwow all of us before the show started, and I needed to make sure everybody was in the right frame of mind, and they were. Um, and then, you know, just the fact that everything that we set out to do, we did, and that the people loved it. You know, they must have chanted, this is awesome, a million times during that match. And um, just um, getting the feedback from the people that watched the match live, seeing how happy everybody was. You know, I was very happy. So um, the highlight to me was just knowing that we had this, knowing that we had this, um, this challenge in front of us and that a lot of things could go wrong and that everything went better than expected. That to me was the highlight. Uh, I think my highlight, and uh, it's kind of this hasn't even been out there at all, and I think it kind of helps make this guy one of the MVPs of like the last couple sets of taping for TNA is the fact that Santana at Bow for Glory the week prior to us filming Barbar Massacre actually I'm pretty sure broke his foot when he ju jumped off the balcony like he was totally messed up and wrestled the entire set of taping and came out no rope barbed wire and acted like nothing was even wrong with him, diving over the barbed wire, coming off the ladders. And I think that right there, I have, we have 
that's OZE, all the respect and admiration in the world for him for the fact that he went in like that when he really didn't have to. You may now ask your question. Plus, uh, I just let me add this. Another great thing about working with these guys is when you work with people, and I've been in a million of these matches, um, uh, because when, when we went to ECW back in the 90s, we, we loved that style so much that we brought it to Mexico. And there was a group of wrestlers, you know, Mysterio, Psychosis, Damien, myself. Uh, uh, There's about six of us that kind of started the, the hardcore style in Mexico. It had never been seen before. And a lot of times you get guys that are like, no, nah, I don't want to do this. Oh, I'm hurt here. Don't do this to me. You know, and then the match, you know, suffers because of it. But there was nobody here that wasn't willing to take any bump on either side. And that really opened up, you know, just a plethora of possibilities. This is Big Ray for OneWrestling.com again. Uh, this is directed to both Conan and Sammy, if you guys can please answer this question. Now, regarding regarding the feud between LAX and OVE, what I've been seeing over the last couple of weeks is hatred, anger. Uh, something that, that you know, in my humble opinion, has been missing from professional wrestling. Do you guys feel that there is an importance to to portray that on television, especially in a feud like this, in a in a universe or or in a wrestling universe where you know on TV you have the hatred and anger, and then you know you see social media, uh, Mickey Mouse and and Donald Duck, if you know what I mean. Absolutely, and I think one thing that uh, really helped us is going into this. I don't even know if we were. We all liked each other. We are just people that were going out there with the same mindset of anywhere on the tapings, at the end of the tapings, we wanted to be the people that remembered. It was like, all oh, these are the best guys in Impact Wrestling. These are the best guys in Impact Wrestling. And when you have two groups and sets of people with equal mindsets like that going into every match, every angle, with everything they got, trying to outwork the other person, that's when the business really fucked, uh, freaking picks up. Like, that's when it becomes better because guys actually do want to go out there and be the best at what they do. Right. So, um, you know, I'm a big proponent of, you know, everybody knows about the business. Everybody, it, is, it isn't closed when I first came in. I mean, when I first broke into the business, I thought it was a shoot. So that tells you everything. I wasn't sure. Let me put it to you that way. I, I didn't think it was 100% shoot because I always used to think, well, if you're getting punched in the face, why don't you have a bruise? But other than that, I just I wasn't sure where the shoot started, what, what was going on. Now everybody knows what's going on. Everybody can be a wrestler. Everybody's a wrestling teacher. It's really easy to get into the business. It's very closed when I came in. But I've always thought that it adds, you know, a little layer of credibility. And I'll give you an example. When I was in Mexico, there was this guy that I feuded with for many years called Perro Aguayo. And um, people would see us at the airport, and when people would ask me for a picture or something, I'd always say, you know, Perro's lucky that there's cameras and there's security. If not, I'd go over there and whoop his ass. And guys would be, oh my God, this is real. You know, and I always made sure that in public, I'd say something to him and, you know, somebody. So I, I when I go into any match, especially with OBE, um, you know, I make sure that, that I channel what I call my, my anger, um, uh, it's kind of like, it's almost like an actor, you know, is, is channeling, you know, whether he has to be sad or he has to be angry or whatever. I go in there and I channel my anger and I make sure that, that, that I'm mad. I make sure my group is mad, you know, LAX is mad, that they're in the same frame of mind. Uh, and we're just, you know, just like Sammy said, you know, they want to steal the show. So do we. If anybody goes out there and outworks LAX, they're going to hear about it. And they know that. And that's just, you know, something that's going to help them in the future. You know, always to go out there and try to steal the show. Always to go out there, no matter what you got to work with. I, I used to talk uh, um, with Eddie Guerrero about this all the time. I remember when he did this um, angle with China, and he hated it. You know, and he was talking to me about it. And I was like, Eddie, whether, you know, if, if people see you don't want to do something when bookers are putting together matches, they're going to be like, well, let's not use Eddie because he's a pain in the ass. Or let's not use Eddie because he's not a good heel. When you're versatile, they know, okay, Eddie, we can put him in a comedy match. We can put him as a baby face. We can put him as a heel. We can put him as a woman. Whatever we put him in there, he's always going to hit a home run. And we always used to say, always make, uh, you know, chicken salad out of chicken shit. So, um, you know, that's, that's kind of our, our, our mindset. You know, we go there, steal the show, and whatever you give us, we're going to hit a home run with it, no matter how, you know, how corny it may be. 
it sounds like you have a lot of respect for each other, though. I'm talking about LAX and OVE. You know, there's the respect because, like I said before, you know, they're out there and they want to be the best, so do we. So we appreciate that. You know, they go out there, they're trying to make a name for themselves, they're trying to, you know, uh, generate a buzz. They're trying to be different, and those are all things that we're we're also trying to do. And like I said before, you know, as they proved in this barbed wire match, which you're going to see, they had no qualms or trepidations. What a tremendous word while on a conference call for a Latino, by the way. But they have no trepidation to go out there and just, if they're going to get hurt, they're going to do it for the love of the game, you know? Thank you so much. Great insight. Thank you. All right. Thank you. All righty, Sammy. I appreciate it very much. Conan, thank you very much. We'll wrap it up there in about 30 minutes. We'll uh, give Conan the, the final word here, and then we'll uh, give Sammy a final say. Yo, you know, this is a great match. This isn't just hype. You're going to see it. And, um, you know, there's a lot of violence, a lot of crazy moves, a lot of crazy bumps. Uh, everybody came out of their hurt, but everybody was happy with what they did. Me, myself, you can always find me, obviously, on, on Impact, on Pop. You can find me. We're going to be with Aero Lucha uh, this weekend in, in Lubbock and in, um, in Amarillo. And also my podcast, Keeping It 100 with Kona. And you can check me out on any of those platforms. And um, I can't wait to hook up with these guys again. I think it's going to be great. And when you really think about it, I'm um, asking the wrestling community. Uh, you may have feel jaded by Impact Wrestling in the past, but with the new people in charge, with what they're trying to accomplish now, their new vision, give this company another chance. I mean, what's it going to hurt you tonight? You can watch a no rope bar bar match that people, I guarantee, are going to be calling Match of the Year for absolute free. It, you don't have to log into anything. You don't have to type in anything. You don't have to try to find the channel on your cable provider. You can legitimately go to Twitter, go to Facebook, anywhere that Impact has posted about this show and click on the link for their Twitch channel tonight at 10 p.m. when Impact goes up there on Pop TV and watch a match that was being too violent for TV, a, a match that hasn't been seen in years, all for free between a bunch of guys wanting to go out there and revolutionize and change the business once again for the better. Uh, you, you can't go wrong. It's free. That's all I'll keep reiterating. It's free. You don't have to do anything except click the link, and I'm begging you all, go click on this link and watch history live. All righty. There you go. Thank you so much, Conan. Thank you very much, Sammy. I, I will add one thing that you guys did not bring up. Uh, media, you should take a look at the fans. They are standing the entire match tonight, uh, from the intros through the finish. 100%. Everybody is standing up there uh, in in, Tor in uh, Ottawa when we filmed it. It was an amazing match. You do not want to miss it. And thank you uh, both. There's also going to be a, a bonus match if you guys want to stay around. It's going to be a um, Ross Foreman against Juventud Guerrero and Kid Romeo in a gelatin and whipped cream match. So if you stay around long enough, you might be able to see that. Is that on Nothing Twitch? Lost. That's on Twitch. And I think it's on Chatterbait too and maybe on Grinder, but I, I'm not sure about the last two. <laughs> well, I, I'm, I'm guessing you're the referee, so we'll see you tonight, Conan. <laughs> I will see you tonight, Ross. Be cool. All right, be good. Thank you, Conan. Thank you, uh, Sammy. All right, thank Jake, you, everybody. You still, uh, Jake, you, is, hold on. Is Jake on this call? Hello. Jake. What's up, Jake? Right? What do you have to say about all this? You've been very quiet there. What, what do you have to say about everything you've heard? Anything you want to say? Uh, what, what can I say? You guys said it all. You guys uh you know, yeah, it's hard to get. It's hard. It's hard to get a, a word edgewise with me and Sammy on here. But go yeah, ahead. Yeah, you know, and it's all good. That, that's why you guys are who you are. That's why you guys are amazing at what you do. So are you, my brother. It was a pleasure to do that shit with you guys. And um, you know, I know we're, you guys are going to turn up the heat uh, for when we meet again. I think we're going to do some great business. Absolutely, and I'm looking forward to that. All right. Not a man of many words. Yes. <laughs> Perfect. Conan, thank you. Sammy, thank you. Jay, thank you. Thank you very much. We will talk to everybody next week. All right. You guys be cool.